Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in this series here. Uh, my name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode I kind of took a step back from coding and reflected on what we've built so far. Uh, specifically I kind of talked about my encounter with the application and you know my initial thoughts on using it when I went to Trader Joe's with the first time as this or using this as my shopping list instead of uh, whatever system we had before that which was normally pen and paper so uh, if you missed that feel free to just uh, jump on back and check out what I had to say and drop any notes that you have so far if you have any and in today's episode we're gonna go ahead and kind of fill out something that I um, have been formulating in my head for a little while the idea of adding categories to each of these uh, items and I'm not talking about these little priority levels essentially but instead uh, you know toilet paper uh, bread or I think in the last example here we use you know bananas and three-quarter inch nails um, you know it could be very weird to see these next to one another but if you knew that this was something that you needed to get from your grocery shopping and this was something you needed to get from your hardware store you know we can kind of have that category associated with it and display that somehow in the UI so the user has a very clear indication of which category um, they would like to attach uh, each of their items to. Um, I could imagine, we'll get rid of this, but I could imagine the uh, category somehow existing in here and we will basically build another table that has all of our categories in it. We will query that table and display them here for the user to select or when they are editing one they can maybe you know choose a different category to select and then um, you know we will uh, update the element accordingly so if we go ahead and just take a look at our item entity here we have um, our entity our primary key and one of the fields we have in our object here is the category ID so we can basically make this our foreign key that points to a primary key on another table and so if you're not familiar with how relational databases work it's pretty much exactly that you know you have two independent tables from one another and some element on let's say table A you have table A and table B some element on table A is the indicator of the primary key for an element on table B so that there is a unique way to map elements from table A to uh, join them with the elements on table B and then you can you know put those two together uh, and then formulate your final um, you know entity that you're looking for here so we're gonna go ahead and create another entity called the category entity this is going to be a data class I don't think we need those uh, we're going to do at primary key um, we'll just call this ID uh, and that will be a string excuse me a string and then also the name which will be a string so um, we can copy this over I wonder if this will give us so it's not freaking out at the moment, but we are going to change the um, the table name here to have our category uh, prefix there. And then, well, that's basically all we need to do to annotate this class to become uh, a table in our database. So what we actually need to do is go ahead and update the abstract class here that extends the room database called app database. We're actually going to go ahead and update the version here and so this is critical you have to update the version anytime you make a change to a table or anytime you uh, make a change to the database and in this case we're actually going to be adding a new table here so uh, in addition to the item entities class we have in our entities array we are also going to add in the category entity class and so now the version 2 of our database has both of these uh, entities which will translate into tables in our database for us. Then we're also going to have to go ahead and create the category entity DAO. 
Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just change that to be the category entity DAO. Uh, let's see, where is this one? We're just going to go ahead and create a new interface called category entity DAO. Uh, we let's at least take. Well, I mean, honestly, we just need to take all of this. We want basically the same functionality, but on a different table. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. And instead of item entity, we're going to have our category entity table. And then instead of that, we will take our category entity, right? So now we have, as soon as we rename this, a way to uh, insert, delete, update, our category entities, and then we can actually get all of them as well. So all these will be used in different uh, fashions for some, some way, shape, or form to basically allow the user to modify the database specific to the category entities. So we will allow the users to add their own categories and assign those user-created categories to the item entities themselves. So let's... Uh, let me see here. Well, let me just go ahead and run this really quickly. Um, we don't seem to have any. Oh. Ah, DAO class must be annotated with at DAO. Of course. Sorry about that small syntax error. That was a build time error, not a. Um, not an error that was coming up in our uh, IDE for us ahead of time. And you saw the app load momentarily and then crash. So here we have an illegal state exception. It says a migration from one to two was required, but not found. Please provide the necessary migration path via add migration or allow for destructive migrations via one of the room builder fallback uh, migration methods. So what does that mean? What are you saying? Why are you showing me an error? Uh, basically, as we've updated this information here, right, we've changed the version from one to two, and we've gone ahead and added this entity into our uh, database. So the app loads up, and it previously had version one installed on it for the, for the database. We then try to install a new, basically update that version of the application to have a uh, the same database with version 2 associated with it. So as part of this migration pattern, the system will ask Room to migrate itself. And there are two options that we have here. And they call it out here in our um, error case here. You either need to provide a migration path or we need to invoke fall to destructive, fallback to destructive migration uh, in our database builder function here that we're calling. And uh, in that case, it would basically nuke the database entirely and rebuild the database with these two tables completely fresh. And so the obvious issue with that is if you had, you know, five, 10, 600 items in your um, database at that moment, if we we, if we allowed the destructive migration to happen, we would lose all those items in our database. And so that would be very, very poor for our, um, for our users. So you can see here, uh, there are a few different functions you can invoke. The most basic is just the fallback to destructive migration. Um, this one I've never used before, but it actually seems like you can specify when at some point you get to a certain version, then you allow um, destructive migrations, but then also on a downgrade allowing for destructive uh, migrations, which is quite interesting. I'm sure all of these have their uses. And you know, in some applications, you can just completely wipe the database out because maybe you know, you're gonna reload that database when the app loads up. But in this case, we're actually using it as a sense of storage for the users. <laughs> we really can't just destroy everything they have here. So what we need to do is we need to add a migration here. 
and we can add in a variety of them, right? It's a var arg um, parameter here, so you can basically just add all the different migration objects that you want, separated by a comma, and so you can migrate from one to two, from two to three, from three to four, et cetera. And so you can actually provide instructions on how the database is supposed to migrate itself when we move from one version to the next here. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, let's say private val uh, migration, nope, one to two. Um, is a migration. Oh well, it's not a variable here. We need to have a class uh, migration extend our migration here. What is this complaining about? Ah, okay. So we need the start version, the end version. So we're going to do one to two, and then we're going to do control I. And this is what I was looking for. Sorry, it does not, it should not. Uh, can you make a private inner class? Yes, you can. Very nice. Um, so we have defined basically a, uh, basically a variable here, the migration one to two. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and basically override this function migrate. So the, it is our responsibility at this point to take into account the previous version of the database and exactly what it, uh, the status it was in previously, and then bring it to the status that it should be with whatever change we're making here. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and add a table to it. So we basically need to leave everything else unaffected and add a table here to this, uh, uh, within this migration. So in all honesty, I do not remember the syntax here. So we're going to Google this one, uh, add table migration, Android room. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it honestly might just be like that. I was going to say, I uh, didn't think we had a better way to do this. Uh, but this is actually a very nicely written answer here. Uh, but essentially what we're going to have to do is run actual SQL. So this is getting a little bit more into the nitty gritty here, but it's uh, very easy to either search around for this or learn this kind of stuff. Uh, but if you're not familiar with SQL, uh, it can be a little annoying. So uh, we're going to have to create the table if not exists. We have uh, the category entity, that's the name of our table, and then it's going to have an ID, which is a string. The primary key is ID. Uh, and then name is also a string. Okay, so after a little bit more Googling around here, uh, string is not the correct uh, name of that uh, data type. It's actually text. Uh, we're also going to set this to not null. We're going to go ahead and add our name. That's also not null. And then at the end, we specify what the primary key of the table is. And so if we go ahead and just quickly look at this, we see we have an ID variable here. We see we have a name variable here. Both of them are strings that are both non null. So we basically just need to reflect that in uh, SQL language essentially and so now at this point the application here should be able to migrate properly from one to two so if we go ahead and add our migration here okay can't be any of those um, it just needs to be a regular class that's accessible. And I guess that's actually a good thing if we ever get to testing this to make sure that it works, we need this to be public. So forget I did that from the beginning, but we've add our migra added migrations and we've migrated from one to two. So if we go ahead and take a look at the, let's see, it doesn't see it. Yeah, okay. So um, 
can't get a snapshot of the database beforehand unless I go ahead and stash all of this and I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just run it again. And at this point here, we see the app boot up and we see everything return to normal here. No crashes, no issues. And I want to take a look at the database inspector at this point in time. And if we do so, we let things load a little bit. Very, very nice. We can see that our item entity table here, uh, as you can see here, is has all the information that we would need. Uh, everything seems to be unaffected at this moment in time. And then our category entity table is completely empty, but you can see that the ID has this little icon next to it for primary key and this name variable as well. Um, and then the little table is empty note here. So um, I kind of forgot we needed to do this migration, but I guess this episode turned into learning how to migrate your <laughs> room database, but that's basically it, right? So to recap, you need to create the new entity for your, uh, that's basically gonna define the schema and the structure of your table. And then it's not necessary, but you know, we're gonna go ahead and create our DAO as well so that we can go ahead and interact with that table. And then in the app database class, you're gonna to have to go ahead and just modify whatever we need to here um, to notify the system of a change. And in our case, we had to add a new entity to the list of entities, update our version, and then provide a migration here because we don't wanna lose all the user's data. If let's say we just had to add uh, an, item, an element to the item entity itself, like we just added a new field here, uh, we would have to then go ahead and basically do this exact same thing, except instead of the SQL statement creating a new table, it would be modifying an existing table by adding or removing a particular column that is of you know whatever type data type it actually needs to be. And so if we have to do that in some later date because of how we've uh, you know some requirement that we run into, we'll show you, I'll show you how to do that then. But it's going to follow the same exact pattern here. You kind of rinse and repeat anytime you need to do a migration to basically run some SQL here uh, on your the database that gets passed in here. That is basically what sits under the hood behind Room. So um, in the next episode, I think we're going to go ahead and actually now update our item entity to incorporate our category entity, and then allow the user to, uh, or eventually allow the user to add categories to the application and then add those categories or assign those categories to a particular item entity and then we'll worry about displaying that information. So a couple steps ahead of us for sure but hopefully you're interested in what's to come and I'm excited to build it for you. So I will catch you in the next one. See you then.